Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you going today? Uh, so last lesson, we looked at adding and subtracting matrices, and we could do that as long as they have the same dimensions or size. Uh, today, we're going to look at multiplying matrices. So to introduce this concept, I'm going to use this into uh, the starting scenario. So uh, this school has four houses, just like ours with like Hammarskjöld, Uthand, Gandhi and Schweitzer. So this school has four houses, Hamilton, Leslie, Barnes and Cunningham. So they've recently had a sports competition. So Hamilton had 40 students come first, sorry, 60 students come first. And then Hamilton had 63 students come second and Hamilton had 51 students come third. For example, Barnes had 64 students coming first and 71 students coming third, etc. And we have a second table saying that every first position they gained five points, every person that came second gained three points, and every third person gained one point in the competition. So the question is, well, how many total points did each house score for this competition? Well, if we were to work this out, the total number of points for each house, right? So let's look at Hamilton. We would say, well, if every first position comes with five points and there's 60 people who came first in a sports competition, then they have a total of 60 lots of five points based on the first winners, right? And then they had 63 people come second and every second person gained three points. And then every they had 51 people coming third and every person that came third gained one point. So we would just multiply it and add it like that. And then if you use a calculator, that total point comes to 540. So Hamilton scored a total of 540 points in this uh, sports competition. We would do the same for Leslie House. Right, so they had 71 people come first and every person that came first um, got five points and then 64 people came second and every second person got three points and then 74 lots of one. Using a calculator, Leslie scored a total of two, uh, 621 points. We do the same thing for Barnes, 64 lots of five and 69 lots of three and 71 lots of one for the third place. So that comes to a total of 598. And then you have Cunningham. So then they had 69 lots of five and 72 lots of three and 68 lots of one, which comes to a total of 629. So after tallying all the points, we can see that Cunningham House won the sports competition. So this is how we would calculate the total points based on the two tables given to us, telling us the information regarding the house and the number of people that came first, second and third, and the positions versus each point allocated, the number of points allocated to each position. But we are talking about matrices, so how do we represent this in a matrix form? Well, let's define some matrices. Let A be the position for each house, number of positions for each house, let B equal points for or number of points for each position, and then C be the total points. So what I mean is, if a is the number of positions for each, each house, and I have four houses, so H, L, B, and C, and then I have first, second, and third as my positions. I can convert this starting table into a four by three matrix, all right? So my elements would be 60, 63, 51, 71, 64, 74, 64, 69, 71, 69, 72, 68. So I literally have not changed anything except turn a table information into a matrix form. So it essentially just erase the lines in between all the numbers, right? That's all I did, because that's the information for the number of positions gained for each house. 
and then B was the matrix of the number of points for each position. So there are three positions, so first, second and third. And then the first got five points, the second got three points, and the third person got one point. Again, so all I did was turn this second table into a matrix formation so that I have a three by one uh, matrix because it's three rows by one column. And then this third matrix, which I called C, I said it's the total points for each house. So what does that mean? So I have four houses, H, L, B, and C, all right? We got the total number of points by doing this calculation of multiplying and adding things together. So if I summarized, so H house got 540 points, L house got 621 points, B house got 598 points, and C house got 629 points, all right? So I summarize the total points information into a four by one matrix. So, and this is how, the next step is how we define matrix multiplication. Hang on, so let me shrink this bit, this part a little bit, because I don't have enough space. Resize, move that there. Okay. There we go, that gives me more space. So I have three matrices. This is a four by three matrix. This is a three by one matrix. And then this is a four by one matrix. So the first matrix is how many people came in the first, second and third positions. Uh, matrix B is the number of points per position that a student came. And then part C is the total number of points that every house gains, right? So we define a matrix multiplication as A times B equals C, yeah? And so how do we matrix multiply? We multiply and then add in between them to get my final answer there, 540. So one thing to note is how the dimensions match up, right? So A is a four by three. B is a 3 by 1, C is a 4 by 1. So what that means is, see how the inside dimensions matches up. The 3 and the 3 matches up. To multiply matrices, your inside uh, column and row dimension must match up. On the outside, you have a 4 and a 1. That is not a coincidence that your resulting answer is also a 4 by 1. So when you multiply matrices, as long as you match up the inside, then you can always multiply them. If the two inside numbers do not match up, then you cannot multiply matrices. Your resulting answer after multiplying has dimension of the outside numbers. So if this was a 5 and a 2, then your answer would be a 5 by 2, as long as you match up the inside numbers. And when we multiply matrices, we mean we multiply and add. So how do we how did we get 540? We took 60 times 5. So 60 is over here. Let me highlight this. So 60 times 5 and then we added 63 times 3 and then we added 51 times 1. Right? And then we add them we plus them together in between to give us 540. So similarly, how did we get the 621? Well, we went 71 times 5, and then our next entry was 64 times 3, um, and then the next entry was 74 times 1. And then you added them together, and then you got, at the end, 621 points in total. So that's really how we multiply matrices. Um, it might be a little bit, a bit confusing right now, but one thing to remember, when you multiply matrices, always go row by column. So always go row by column. And what I mean is your row 60 times five. So that's the column down by 63 times 3, by six, uh, 51 times 1, 
and you add them all together. So row by column. Um, we'll explain a little bit more what it means uh, with example five over the page. But before we get to example five, just re-emphasizing the importance of matching up the inside dimension. So if I have a matrix, which is order M by N, and I have another matrix N by P, then as long as the inside dimensions match up, the you can multiply the matrix, and the resulting matrix is the outside number dimensions, which is M by P. Um, so make sure here again that your number of columns in the first matrix is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. Otherwise, it is not defined because you can't multiply them. Um, so here again, it's saying in words, the product is obtained by multiplying each element in each row of the first matrix by the elements of each column in the second matrix, row by column. And we'll look at a bit more in detail with example five.